Hey, how's it going? Uh, my name is Rich Fallot, and I wanted to share how I set up my NFT art generation pipeline in Python. So we're going to start out with this, just creating a folder somewhere. Right now we're looking at Visual Studio Code. Um, like I said, we're going to be using Visual Studio Code in Python. Um, I'm going to assume that you have some level of experience with Python, so I'm not going to be going into all of the small details, but I will try to provide some information on where to look and some perhaps some Google search terms and that sort of thing. So we're going to start out. Um, right now I'm in a clean directory. We have no files, nothing. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is create a few directories and this is how I've basically set up my structure hopefully uh, you'll be able to learn from how I've set this thing up and uh, you'll be able to make decisions on your own see what works out best for you but anyways so first thing I'm going to do is make a directory called collection and this is because I'm creating an NFT collection so I'm going to try to keep it, most of the folders very descriptive. I, um, there's, a, there's a few different ways that this stuff could be coded up, you know, it could be even more automated, but I kind of like things to be descriptive just because it just makes it clear, easy to find things. Um, as you see, if you're trying to make, like for example, 10,000 NFTs, you're going to be dealing with a lot of files, so I want to make things as descriptive and easy to click around and find if need be. So anyways, first thing, collection, you'll see up in this uh, file navigator we have the collection folder. Uh, so now let's make some more. Let me out. And now, um, so we're making generative art. What is that exactly? Um, what we want to do is take layers such as that you would see in Photoshop and we want to take transparent Pong layers and we want to stack them on top of each other and composite the image in Python. We want to do it in Python rather than Photoshop because we want to be able to do many, many, many of these things very, very quickly. And we want to do it programmatically. We want to be picking layers and turning them on and off. So I want to make this as easy as possible to do. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to create our folders. Our folder structure is going to mirror the name of the layers that we are creating. So like I said, I want to create these things as descriptive as possible. So the first one, I'm going to start with background. I'm going to make it BG, BG for background. Uh, and this is going to be a character. Uh, so the next thing I want to have is a body. Uh, this layer I want to create is the hair. And then I'm, I'm just going to speed up some of this stuff because it, especially these sections where it, it's like every single layer, um, I'm going to speed these up. So you have to sit there and watch me fumble around typing badly. And finally make their signature because every work of art, well, in my opinion, I'm not going to say every work of art. Some work of arts like to have their signature on the bottom right, like the classic painters, so we're going to have a signature. All right, so we have all of our layers. Um, actually, sorry, I forgot one. I forgot a couple, but we'll see when the program barriers out. Let's take a few more. We'll tail. You see quite a few layers, uh, relatively speaking. I'm sure Photoshop you can have 100 layers if you want, but this this we want to keep it as condensed as possible. We'll try to do as much merging in our art package, whether it be Photoshop or Procreate, I'm using Procreate, kind of merging things together there as much as possible and then feeding it into this program. So let's get to the coding aspect. 
So now we have this directory structure. Things should begin to start working. Uh, it should be set up properly. So I'm just gonna kind of go through what I did um, through all my different trials and errors. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a file. I'm gonna call it generate.py. And let's open that up. Uh, and this is the Python file that we're going to use to generate the images. So first thing, I'm going to assume that there are many people who do not have much of a programming background. I don't have a ton of experience. I have a decent amount, but not a ton. So I don't do this for a living. I apologize if I make any egregious mistakes. So this is just some import statements that we need to bring in. So we're going to bring in random because this is how we're going to randomly pull in our files, um, our layers that is. Uh, we're going to import OS. We're going to import shutil for copying things around. Um, and so here, this is for example, this is one thing I am not going to show you how to do. We're going to import this package called pill. Uh, we're going to import a couple of modules, image, and image shops. So in order to get this, I needed to pip install this. Uh, there's many ways to do this. There's many way to, ways to install different packages, but just Google PIL. Import PIL Python image library. And then finally, I'm not 100% sure. I, I pared down this demo. So I'm not sure we're even going to use JSON, but I'm going to put it in there anyways. Okay. Um, next, we're going to create a function. All right. Um, add a couple inputs. We're going to have a root path. This is just basically, this is going to be where, basically where we are now. Um, but uh, I'm going to have it as an input just in case we want some extra flexibility later down the line, and then finally traits. So basically what we're, what we're gonna call each, we're gonna call each um, layer that we save a trait. So for example, the hair could be a spiky haircut, uh, it could be dreads, it could be bald. So those are traits. And traits help, from my understanding, they help the scarcity factor when trying to sell NFTs. So what we're going to want to do ultimately, I'm not going to show you in this demo, but ultimately what we're going to want to do is have metadata that lives alongside um, these image files so that we can upload it to OpenSea, or, or no, actually so we can upload it directly to blockchain with the metadata proper, properly set up. Um, maybe I'll make a video, just comment and let me know if you're interested in that. So we started this and we're just going to name this generative art repository. Okay, so first thing we're going to want to do the variable to calculate all the total possibilities. You know, This isn't necessary, but I thought it was a pretty cool thing. And I thought, folks, I know I enjoy it, so I figured it would be worth adding. Possible. I am horrible at typing. Okay. We want to get. Now we're going to list all the files that end up getting leveraged. So basically every single layer that we paint, whether it be a hair, tail, body, background. So every single layer that's, that we um, basically end up getting leveraged in this program. I just want to create a variable up front for it so that, you know, at the end of the program, we can say, hey, uh, you, know, you actually painted 100 pieces of, uh, or a hundred layers. So, you know, be proud of yourself for painting all those. Um, 
recipe. This is another little aspect that you know, I'm just adding. It's not 100% necessary. I'm going to make it recipe. So the name of the file um, that ultimately gets that the image that you end up generating from this little program, which is going to create one image at a time, this little function will. Um, but the name of the image itself is going to be a recipe. So if we ever need to piece back this image together, we can use the file name. Also not necessary, but so the next part we're going to want to pull random files from from specified directories. This is going to be our main loop uh, for. So basically we're going to want to go inside this directory. Um, we're going to use the root path input. So basically we're going to take every single file that's in the directory. So basically what we're after right here is to try to figure out the list of all the different folders. Now, next we're going to basically, you know, before I, so we're going to have this traits input. Okay. Before I go any further here, I want to create a dictionary at the bottom as a placeholder because this is ultimately what is going to go inside our function. I want you all to know what that looks like. So what, what are these going to be? They're going to be exactly the layers that we created earlier. So uh, we got to go through and do all this. And I will most likely be fast forwarding this part. But I want you to know. So basically, what, but real quick, what this is, is the key is the name of the folder and ultimately what this is going to be is the name of the file that gets picked the special file that gets picked to assemble this you know this very unique image we're going to use this uh, dictionary to track that information now we got our final the signature so we have all of our traits, and then this will ultimately get fed into our function. And now we're going to check that if everything in this root directory, we're going to make sure that we're only going to look into the folders listed in this dictionary. All right. So first, we're going to create a variable called weights with an empty list. And these are these are the weights of each file. Each file within the file naming convention is going to have its weight set. So like let's say um, there's a bunch of t-shirts that we're working on and we just want kind of for the majority of the people wearing shirts we want some of them to be like mostly just like normal colors navy blue but then we have some real bright red ones and we only want like 10% to be bright red, for example. So that's what you want to do. We want to set weights and we want to say for basically every single file, we can set a weight. Um, we can say, okay, this pink hair, I only want to set it 1%. Um, and that's how our program is going to work. So we, within the actual file, rather than have our program have to you know do all this crazy logic we're just going to build a weighting into the file and i did not come up with that idea i found it on youtube sorry i cannot reference it right now but it's a good idea so now the next thing uh, we're going to get every single file that's in each directory and plus five. So basically this is going to be a root class plus this. So this is going to be basically we're, we're building a path to this directory. Um, let me go to possibilities again. Thank God I don't have to type that. Uh, 
So now what we're going to do, now we're going to start adding up all the total. Oh, no, 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 I actually got that wrong. We're going to be multiplying. So we're going to be multiplying all of our, all of our samples. So this is to get our running possibility so we can calculate how many total possibilities there are. And I think what I'm from the one where I'm at now is like some crazy absurd number. It's like 246 billion potential uh, combinations. So it's like it's not it's not super hard to get 10,000 unique uh, images, as you'll see. So next, the two elements, and this one we're just these are just counters. These are the counters we set up earlier. So ne next thing we're going to do, this is the area where, like I said, we have the weight as part of the naming convention. Um, so we're going to extract the, the weight from the naming convention. And this is what the naming convention is. So we're going to have our descriptor. I've just been using a number, but it really could be anything we want. And we're going to put the weight. I like to start with 100. I think 100 is a good, it really can be anything, it can be arbitrary, but I like to start with 100 so that I can always go up or down. Um, if I really want something to only have 1%, um, I think that that's, you know, it's a pretty good, it's a pretty good fidelity, so. So this is what it's gonna look like. This is the naming convention, the description, the weight, and then dark pong. Four J in samples. Now we're going to loop through every single file that we found in that directory. Now this is going to be a pretty ugly expression. I'll try to walk you through it, but basically all this is trying to do is it's going to go through the directory. It's going to find a file such as this, and it's just going to take. It just wants this middle number. So we're going to basically be pruning everything else up. Bear with me because this is not the prettiest. So what we're going to do is take weights. We're going to append what we get out of here because this is we're going to build basically an array of a weight for every single file. We're going to loop through and get get the weights for every single file. All right, so let me make sure that this is an int. And this uh, I'm making this as a it's going to be an int later. Um, so then basically what we're going to do is take the take this file, split it at the dot. It's going to split it into two pieces, basically. Uh, I want to take the first piece, which is going to have the 1 underscore 100. And I'm going to split that again. And uh, there you go. We're going to split it at the underscore. Now. We split it at the dot, we split it at the underscore. Now I want the last number, which is this 100. So set this to negative one. All right, no, ugly, but it works and I did it in a line of code. So I'm not too mad about it, but it sucks for a demo. All right, type. Now, next we're gonna do, um, we're going to change the, so this is something to do with the random function. We just need to, uh, we just need to change the type on weights. And this is just because of the root, a tuple. Trust me, I've gone through this. I did not just write this straight. There is quite a bit of tri trial and error. So next we want, we're going to call this the pick. So this is the file. It's going to go through, it's going to find out, see all these files, it's going to pick a random one. This is where we do it. Random choices. Uh, we're going to go into our samples, which is every single file in the directory. Now we're going to go to weights. And that, this is where, it's this part of, is, it's this second slot in the function where the weight needs to be a tuple input. And so long as the weights and the samples, the indices match up, this should work. Works good. All right. Now we gotta. Now after we pick the file, now we gotta assemble the path. So what we're gonna do is we're all, we're also gonna write this into our dictionary. 
So traits I, so for example, if it, we're looping through, it would be traits BG, for example, um, which is this right here. So what we're, we're writing right in there, we're going to write the root path, which is one of the inputs of the function I. And finally, this is the pick. Pick zero, which is, so this is a list. Um, Random.choices function automatically returns a list. So pick, and I'm not sure if there's more than one item. I'm pretty sure there's only one item in the list, but just to make sure, it's pick zero. I've tried this a couple times. Um, so now finally, now here's the, here's the part where we actually have our recipe, our naming convention. Um, let me pull this out, hit naming convention section. Um, and, yeah, for example, 100.pong, and for example, oh no, uh, 1100BG. That's what, that's what the naming convention will look like. Um, I know that's weird, but you'll see when it's finally all put together. Um, so I'm going to name a variable called recipe pick uh, zero. So that's the same as this right here. Uh, we're going to split that by the dot delimiter. Grab the first one and then add i. So what was that? Basically, uh, this is what uh, I'm going to copy paste from another file that I'm referencing right now. But this is what the file is actually going to look like. It's, it's kind of crazy looking and long, but it's a recipe. If you see right here, we got five underscore 10 skin, blah, blah, blah. It, it's a means to get back and rebuild if you need to. Uh, it doesn't have to be this, but I thought it came in handy a couple times. All right, so that's the main loop. Um, let's get out of there. Uh, okay. And now finally for recipe, we're going to plus equal what it is after the loop, and then we're just going to add a pawn to it. And for fun, Print it out. Print. Make it nice. Good looking. All right. So uh, now here's um this section right here. I, don't know, I, th I think it, it's it's clever if you ever wanted to move this out of Python and into, for example, Adobe After Effects or Nuke. Um, what, rather than kind of randomly pick these files and open them up, have Python do its thing and then spit it back out, what I'm doing is I'm actually taking the file and copying, copying it into a master file. So the master file is essentially always getting overwritten every single time I run the program. The master file is always over, overwritten, but it's also the, the file that always gets loaded. Um, and you'll see it ends up being um, helpful in a couple different ways. And it would also be helpful if you're, you want to kind of automate this whole process with After Effects or Nuke. I try, I try to do this with After Effects and um, I don't know, yeah, it was, uh, it was kind of pathetic that uh, it, After Effects didn't work with like this cut of uh, Mac OS, but anyways. Next, we're going to go into, now we're going to loop through every single key, and we're going to copy basically the file that we assembled here. We're going to copy this and into the, basically the collection folder, and we're also going to copy it into the 
possibly try util dot freeze the copy file traits i and we're going to we're going to write this to the out directory that we copied originally in the beginning and we're just going to make the naming convention here. So we're going to take trait i, which is going to end up being a path that got clipped in here. Um, so we're going to copy that file into the out directory and name it. We're going to name it the name of the trait. So in the out directory, we're going to name it. So what we're going to do is take it in the trait and we're going to what we're going to do is name the file the name of the layer. So bg body hair single blah, blah. So the master. So it's bg.pong body.pong hair pong. That's what's going to happen. So we're going to copy that file, put it over there. So we have our master. Um, Unfortunately, I tried this a couple times and realized that we do. There, there's probably quite a bit of uh, exception handling that needs to happen, but might as well help you all out if you need it. Uh, now let's just put a little message. System. I'm going to touch create the file that is not there. If it isn't, I'm just going to touch it and make it. And then I'm going to run this again. All right. Now, finally, all that for the fun stuff. We're going to generate the image. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create variables to actually load every single image up into. Um, so we're going to, so now we're going to be using the image module. Uh, Image.open or now we're simply going to be grabbing from the traits this thing right here. So, and again, I do not want to make you watch me copy every single layer. All right. So now I have BG body tail scan here over overlay signature. All these files just got opened up into memory. Um, now, at this part, we're going to want to composite the layers. Now to composite, um, we're going to start set the variable out. This comes into handy. I use it quite a bit in this expression language that uh, we use it work. I'll show you basically what's happening. So we're gonna use, we're gonna call this uh, image dot alpha composite. It, uh, it's, it's just an a over b. That's all it is. So basically, what we're gonna be, we're telling it we're gonna take the body, put it over the background. That's it. Super simple. So now what we're gonna do? We're gonna set out again. Go image. Alpha composite. Now instead we're going to set out and then the following layer, which is tail. See? So out is actually the totality of these two. Or, or the, it's basically it's the total composite with the variable before it. 
So you, then all you really need to do is just keep on doing this for every single layer. Skin. Can you go a little bit faster? Here. You want for here. One for over. And now, okay, we're gonna, you'll, you may have noticed that there's one called overlay. You can actually do some blending modes in this Python package. So this is kind of cool. We'll go to image chops dot overlay. So we're actually going to be using a 50% gray image to uh, run a uh, Photoshop over overlay function. Um, I will say you probably don't want to use the one thing that I notice here is you don't want to use transparent pongs for any of the blending modes. So just make sure it's 50% click gray solid pong. Um, just wanted to note that. Okay, and then finally we want out and the signature. All right, so this should be our composite. Now what we have to do is save the file. So basically, I'm going to show you. I'm using Visual Studio Code. I re recommend using Visual Studio Code too for this, pretty much just for this right here. So file for VS Code. Um, let's see. So we're going to take that out, which is the final composite. We're going to save it. Um, we'll put it the first one. This is the one for, for Visual Studio Code specifically. Final. We're just going to plot that in the main directory. And um, this is the one. This is now. This is where we every single file, as you know, we, it has a crazy long name. But that name also serves a purpose. There can't be the same name file in a directory. So um, we're just going to be outputting that file into this collection directory, even though depending on how many, well, let's just put it this way. It guarantees that you're not going to have the same file as long as you're doing this in Python. So we're going to do the save here again. Uh, Instead, uh, let's try that again. We're going to put this in the collection folder that we created in the very beginning. We have the recipe. And very finally, uh, we want to print out our results. There are This will be the number of possibilities, possible works of art. Okay, so that's, let's see, uh, let's see how many errors I get from trying to type that up. Um, we will go and try to call this function now. So basically, I'm going to make my little root path. We're just gonna make, I'm just going to put in the same directory that I'm using as the root. I'll take a root path and traits. All right, let's see if it works. All right, yeah, there. So I found at least one error. Um, and I also took the liberty to do another thing. So first off, I'll just get to the error. So we were we were down here uh, scrolling up um, over here and line 48. Just needed to remove the equal sign and make it a plus equal sign. All right. Um, I'm sure some of you probably caught that on the spot. And also another thing is I pre-populated these with some of the um, images that I've already created and I also hopefully if you didn't have your head quite wrapped around the whole layering aspect this will help out 
So I'm gonna just like here, for example, here's one BG. And it's, it's just kind of in here, Visual Studio Code. It's such a wonderful program. I love it so much. But anyways, I have a couple of different backgrounds here. They kind of like some god rays. You can see this. And we can see in the naming convention, according to this naming convention, only 5% will have this kind of like blue expo explosion, 5% will have god rays, 5% and so on. And then this will be the um, most prevalent, uh, I, I don't know the exact math, but obviously it will have more because it has 100 and 100 is more than 5. Um, okay, so anyways, um, now we have different bodies. I just kind of randomly grabbed a few things. But so this would be the body layer. Um, hair. These are like, these would be like the different hair layers. And you can see, you can see the transparency nicely here in Visual Studio Code. While I kind of just click here. Um, it's really nice just to like quickly pull up these images. And then again, we kind of go through the overlay. And this is what I was saying. It's there's no transparency in the one that's using the overlay. It's a uh, hundred percent opaque. And then here we go with the little signature in the bottom corner. So there you go. and so on and so. Forth. Um. All right. So now we have populated all these. Actually, let me make sure that these last two are also popular. Okay, we have skin. Skin has like design patterns on it and different effects. And finally, tail. So this is like this Myrmicorn character. Um, so, okay. Now, I am going to kind of, I'll leave this open. Um, all right, so we have our script. Uh, we're ready to press play. Let's see. All right, I took care of one error. Let's see if there's more. Yes, there is. Beam error trait is not defined. 57, I think it's supposed to be traits. Okay, hopefully that did it. And Right. See a couple little errors, but I think that the image succeeded. So all this junk is an error. So now let me go ahead and fix it. Sorry, sorry, y'all. I'm I am kind of winging this. But I thought it, I thought it was important to uh, get this information out of here. Delete. So, all right, so now if you see, we, yeah, it just that kind of threw me off that the uh, collection popped up. But you see, here's the image, the first image that got created, and here's the final. So, I'm going to select the final and let's see, bump it a bum. Let's see if it worked. Yeah, I think that did work. So as you see, we had all those other smaller pieces and layers, and now it's all kind of composited together. Now what's cool, we have this computer program now that can just generate as many of these as we want. So every time I press play, you can see Visual Studio Code. Since I have this final JPEG selected, you can see now there's two. So I pressed it twice, now we actually have two different files here in this uh, collection folder because this is where we're actually collecting them. But this file, final, keeps on getting overridden, which Studio Code is actually looking at right now. So every time I hit play, we get to see the new updated photo, which I thought ended up working out really nicely. Happy accident. As you see, every time we hit play, pretty quickly, there's a new image and you know, it's got seven layers or so, seven, eight layers. Um, and you know, easily throw this into a loop and you can render 10,000 unique. Oh yeah, let me see, let's look at the printout too. 
So at this point, as you see, it kind of populated. Um, there, there's a lot more in the project that I'm working on currently, but even just like this, like a handful in each, there's 691,200 possible works of art. Thank you so much. Uh, if you like this, uh, please let me know in the comments. Thank you.